Hi, I'm Dominic. Thanks for watching Dominic's Woodworks. And today we'll start with something, well, metaphysical. This is a leg of a, well, a serving cart that I dismantled probably half a year ago. The thing is, I went back, took the pieces and upcycled them into something else. And I looked everywhere, but I don't have any pictures of the complete cart. So what I can give you is a metaphysical journey to seeing this card. So I still have three pieces that might give you an impression of how the card looked. So first two are the actual top. I can get it to fit together. And I guess what era this is from. To me it's darkest 70s, but well, it's a matter of taste. So that's the top. About here, and then probably about as high as my nose, there was a bottom shelf. The whole thing came on wheels, and these were the legs. The wheels were pretty flimsy to begin with, and it just begged me to upcycle it. And that's what I'm doing. Enjoy! This is the top of the aforementioned cart. At this point I still thought it was some kind of plastic. I flipped it over and used a screwdriver to remove the plastic profile staple to the wood that was holding the tile in place. Then I discovered that the frame that held the legs was merely glued to the top and removed it. To my surprise, the piece turned out to be one large ceramic tile. This I will save for a future project, just like the top frame, which would make a nice picture frame. Next I salvaged the remaining pieces. The underframe was glued and stapled together and I used pliers to remove these staples. Then there is the lower shelf. Also a leg, which I did not use, and a handle which I did. The lower frame is a good example for aggressive recycling with a rubber mallet. The shelf itself is made of plywood that felt rather cheap, but is not beyond redemption. For that I clean up one edge on the table saw and then cut the remainder in half in order to sandwich the two pieces together. After I remove the clamps, I'm left with a rather sturdy piece that I need to clean up on all four sides on the table saw. Not only does that remove the glue squeeze out, but it also gives me all the measurements I need to continue. I sand away the glue residue on the molded slats. The idea is to put the two different slats from under frame and lower frame together just so. Since one still has a slot from the plywood, I want to use my table saw to create a similar slot in the other slat to use with a loose tenon for stability. Using the existing slot as a guide, I make sure to run all four pieces through the plate whenever I move my fence. This way I do not have to go back for any piece and with regular checks, I would only ruin one, just in case I mess up. Next I cut the mitres in the slats that will be the vertical pieces of the tray by tilting my table saw blade to 45 degrees. Using the bottom as a guide, I cut one side of each piece, then work my way up to a fit on the other. Then I glue this part of the frame together using a band clamp. To be safe, I put the bottom in propped up on a few pieces of scrap to have it centered. Then I cut the horizontal slats to match using my miter gauge and the blade untilted. The cutoffs from the plywood make for good tenons since they are already of the right thickness. I sand them clean to get rid of glue residue and then I glue the tenons into the slot of the frame. The cutoffs only yielded three tenons, but I found a matching piece of plywood in my scrap repository. Then I glue the horizontal pieces onto the frame and the tenons. I use two larger boards as calls to clamp the whole thing together. Now comes the fun part, and the dusty one. Using a metal brush, I distressed the wood by removing most of the stain. This turns out to be quite tricky with a handheld drill since it deflects easily. So I switched to my drill press and a larger brush. 
I also use my shop made dust collection. Here are some nice views of my sweater, but here you can see what I actually do. Do the same with the bottom. Next I take the four mitered pieces that held the legs in the original design. After sanding off the glue residue on them, I cut two thin slices of the vertical slats of the tray. I then CA glue them onto the mitered pieces to act as templates and I use the bandsaw and my belt sander to shape them for a good fit with repeated testing. Once that is done, I distress these pieces using the belt sander and the handle with a metal brush. Since I need two handles, I cut the one I have in half and mark where it will go on the mitered pieces. From there I drill a hole to, for the screw in the center of the circle I traced. I also sink it with a larger bit to add a plug later. There's already a small hole in the thin end of the handles, so I only need to drill into the large end of my hand drill since the pieces turned out to be too long for my drill press. I cut off the pieces that obviously need to go, then I screw the handles together. Then I sand the transition smooth, removing material from both sides as necessary. I mark where the handle will be, thus where I need to drill the through holes and I go at a 45 degree angle with my hand drill. Holding the handles in place, I drill a pilot hole from the inside into the pieces. I then drill vertically into the inside holes with a larger bit, again for a plug. I use my plug cutter and a piece of scrap to make all the plugs I need. I chamfer the edges slightly with some sanding and insert the plugs with a little glue, taking care to align the grain decently. To insert the bottom into the frame, I then need to take off half the plugs on the inside with a chisel. So, that's the finished tray and since recently I've seen more and more people eat on their videos, I'll do the same now. Now it would be too Nick Ferry to talk with, with my mouth full. Let me just say, this is the tray. I like how it turned out, it's rustic and I thought about finishing it, but, well, I won't. I could probably put some kind of lacquer on there. Or maybe poly, but I uh, like this, uh, this used wood look and I think no matter what I put on it, it would look different. So I like it how it is and I'll, that's how I leave it. But let me still take the chance to make you hungry. Good thing there's fast forward, isn't it? And for something completely different, drinking from my wooden cup, which no, I didn't make myself, but one of the days I will. Spiced wine from a local well, guy who makes this called Hippocras. It's something medieval, as also I've been told. For those in Germany, I'll put a link in the description and so, here's to you, and to upcycling old ugly furniture into, well, I wouldn't call it a beauty, but it's, well, it's a tray. And that's a good tray off. Oh, sorry. And I'll finish with the flyby. So if you like this project and feel that you trade up with it, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. If you feel betrayed by this tray, sorry for the pun, then give it a thumbs down and let me know why. Thanks for watching everyone and remember to be inspired. Oh, and keep in mind for these flybys to keep a firm grip of the straps on your camera so you don't get hung up on every corner of your table saw like I did.